water. It is a crucial ingredient for life and makes up about 70% of the world's surface. The oceans and seas of the earth are very large and there is much that is unknown about life in these regions. The amount of diversity that exists in the huge expanse of the world's water is unknown, but it is probably spectacularly high. Just as on land, the water of the world contains different regions with species and geography that varies. The types of creatures in the water are therefore not all evenly distributed, but can be found in different pockets of the world. Factors such as distance from shore and water depth are very strong influences on what types of organisms live in a territory. Fish are able to inhabit many aquatic environments and are abundant in most of these places. There are about 32,000 identified fish species currently, which makes this class of vertebrate easily the most diverse of all. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I'm David Attenborough. Hey, over here! Look over here! Hey, over here! Oh, I wonder who that is. friend David Attenborough to fish with me. And hey, guess who's coming right now? Hello, David. Oh, hey. It's a lovely day out. I'm glad we can fish here together at Lake Ontario. What are you spotting for? Oh, it should be fun. I'm just trying to cast just about anything at the moment. What about yourself? Well, I was thinking of taking home a small lake sturgeon. You know, to make some of my famous fish and chips. Ah, you know, just think about those tender pieces of fish, just irresistible. Especially when they're deep fried and your famous beer batter to golden perfection. David, David, oh. now come on. Um, I was going to ask though, do you know that the lake sturgeon is Ontario's largest freshwater fish? Really? Yes, and speaking some more about the size of the lake sturgeon, it can grow over nine feet in length and weigh almost 400 pounds at its largest size when fully grown. The lake sturgeon reaches adulthood at about 15 years old and can live up to 100 years. Looking at the lake sturgeon's morphology, they have cartilaginous skeletons, large bony plates along the body, and taste buds that are located on and around its barbells. These barbells are the whisker-like appendages that are found around its lips. These lips are used to vacuum up whole prey found at the bottom of the lake. Because they are bottom feeders, as well as opportunistic feeders, these lake sturgeon will tend to eat up things like insect larvae, small fish, worms, and just about anything else it can dig up with its snout at the bottom of the lake. In terms of reproduction, the lake sturgeon reaches sexual maturity at around 25 years old. It spawns once every four years, from April to June, and its ideal spawning areas are shallow at about 0.6 to 2 meters depth. The temperature preferred for lake sturgeon spawning is in the range of 13 to 18 degrees oh, hold Celsius. Hold on, hold on there, David. Did you say you wanted to catch a small lake sturgeon? I don't think that's a good idea. Well, why not? 
Well, I think it would just be a better idea if we caught something else, because lake sturgeon is currently endangered. We should probably be more careful and try to conserve them. Well, that's interesting, David. Can you tell me why lake sturgeon is of a conservation concern? Does this only apply to Ontario or elsewhere as well? Oh, good question, David. Well, lake sturgeon are found across North America, mainly in the upper Mississippi River, Hudson Bay, and the Great Lakes. However, lake sturgeon is the only sturgeon species found in Ontario. It's of a major concern because its populations have declined since the 1800s due to overhunting because it was a valuable food resource. Unfortunately, they have not recovered since, and now only 1% of the original population remains. Oh, I see. Would you like to tell me the conservation issues on a broad scale? Well, of course, Dave. On a broad scale, threats such as habitat fragmentation, pollution, climate factors, and over-exploitation have played a role in lake sturgeon population decline. First, examples of habitat fragmentation include building dams as well as hydroelectric developments. In terms of building dams, these constructions create barriers and block lake sturgeon from migrating to different areas, which can greatly reduce spawning success. In terms of hydroelectric plants, these plants use the energy from falling water to generate electricity. However, as you can probably imagine, water falling onto the water surface can redirect currents as well as intensify water flow in streams. These factors can redistribute fish eggs as well as larvae and spawning shoals to habitats that may not be suitable for growth. In terms of pollution, more specifically, pulp and paper mills pollute water systems greatly. The factories tend to release contaminants into the water, which contain organic compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These compounds are very deadly because they elicit physiological defects such as stunted growth and development on both fish and embryos. In terms of climate factors, global warming, caused by carbon dioxide pollution, has warmed many bodies of water. This leads to reduction in the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water, and unfortunately results in hypoxic conditions. However, lake sturgeon requires a high amount of oxygen to thrive and be able to spawn. In terms of over-exploitation, this occurs mostly in the commercial fishing industry. Fishermen tend to catch mass numbers of fish using the net fishing method, which is dragging a large net through the water and scooping whatever is in its path. However, this usually results in sturgeon bycatch, which is basically unintentionally catching lake sturgeon while fishing for other fish. Keeping all these factors in mind, David, these are the reasons why catching small lake sturgeon is of a major conservation concern. But why small lake sturgeon in particular? Good question. Well, as you had mentioned earlier, David, sturgeon takes about 25 years to reach sexual maturity and spawn only once every four to five years. In other words, Dave, the late age of sexual maturation significantly prolongs the time for the population to regrow. If you were to remove small fish, or should I say juveniles from the water, it will take even longer for the population to recover. That was very informative.